Welcome, my name is Ivan Barge. I'm here to interview Scott Kastner from Philadelphia about the Go Reduce study. So, Mr. Kastner, please tell me a little bit about the background of this uh, trial, the Go Reduce study. Sure, it'd be my pleasure. So, the, the Gore trial uh, aimed to establish the superiority of PFO closure with medical therapy consisting of antiplatelet therapy compared to antiplatelet therapy alone for patients with cryptogenic stroke and PFO. Um, a, as you know, there's been several prior trials of PFO closure that all were unable to show that PFO closure was uh, efficacious, um, at least in their primary intention to treat analyses. So we, we embarked on this trial back, initially designed it in 2006, uh, to try to address this question in a highly selected population of patients with cryptogenic stroke and, and hopefully no other cause of stroke besides their PFO. Great. So you started the trial of the patient recruitment, when was it started? The recruitment started in, in uh, 2009 um, and ended in uh, February of 2015. Okay. We had, everybody had to have at least two years of follow-up and so we just reached that point in February of 2017 um, and actually just locked our database only a couple of weeks ago. So the data are very fresh to all of us. Okay. And so the intervention group received uh, septal occlusion uh, plus antiplatelets. Uh, what was the treatment in the comparison uh, group? So, so all, all of the patients got antiplatelet therapy and the preference was aspirin. Um, we allowed for uh, aspirin, dipritamol, or clopidogrel as, as monotherapy. Uh, but there was no other combination allowed, there was no anticoagulation allowed, and um, we uh, specifically instructed all of the sites to treat the patients, to make a decision about which antiplatelet therapy you're going to put the patient on and keep them on that through the duration of the study, regardless of how they're randomized. Um, so essentially standardizing all the patients to antiplatelet therapy similarly in, in both arms, and, and that actually worked out. Um, and then we randomized in this two-to-one fashion, so twice as many patients got closure compared to medical therapy uh, with one of two devices made by Gore. One was called the Gore Helix device, and that was used up till uh, 2012, and then they switched to a newer generation of a similar device that's called the Gore Cardioform Septal Occluder, or GSO. And that's what was used from 20, late 2012 until uh, the trial reached its recruitment uh, goal. And all patients were followed for at least three years? All followed for at least two years, up to five years. So um, the, the average uh, follow-up is about three to three and a half years. Okay. And was there any imaging as part of the follow-up? Yes. So uh, we, we sort of uh, anticipated when we started this trial that... Uh, when this trial was started, none of the trials had yielded results, and we didn't know what the event rates were going to be. So we, we thought initially as a, kind of a secondary endpoint that we would get MRIs at baseline in a two years to see what develops in the interim. Uh, and, and so that was done in, in all of the patients. Um, interestingly, as the other trials started to yield results over the years, we saw that the clinical event rates were lower than we had anticipated back when we designed this trial. And so MRI was essentially elevated to a co-primary endpoint. So our, the primary endpoint of the gore reduced trial is clinical events through the duration of follow-up um, and uh, clinical stroke events through the duration of follow-up. And then the second co-primary endpoint was new brain infarction, clinical or MRI infarction through that two-year endpoint um, where we have MRIs on everybody. Okay. And so now are you ready to Give us the main result of yes, the trial? Yes, absolutely. So we're very pleased to report that we found a hazard ratio uh, for, for the clinical event endpoint of, of stroke. We found a hazard ratio of 0.23, a 77% risk reduction in the hazard of recurrent stroke with a p-value of 0 0.001. Very, very strongly statistically significant results in favor of closure versus antiplatelet therapy alone. And in that secondary co-primary co endpoint of new brain infarction, we found a a relative risk of 0.51 or a 49% relative risk reduction again statistically significant. So both co-primary endpoints achieve their goal and prove the hypothesis that PFO closure reduces the risk of these events. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yes. We're very excited. Fantastic. Any safety concerns? So overall the risks of major serious adverse events were the same in both groups. Uh, bleeding was the same, DVT, pulmonary embolus was the same. Um, atrial fibrillation was more common in the patients who got the device. Overall, that rate was about 6.6% in the device group. Most of that was deemed 
not to be serious by the investigators. It was largely peri-procedural, transient, and resolved. Um, but that, that would be the, the one concern that, that um, may raise uh, some questions for, for people. Um, it's interesting, in, in the prior trials, atrial fibrillation was seen with the device. And that may have led to some increased uh, attentiveness to atrial fibrillation. So it's possible that in people who got the device, their uh, clinicians looked harder for atrial fibrillation. And maybe that's part of why we see a 6.6% uh, rate. But it, we need to explore it further. Yeah. Have you had time to look into subgroup effects? I mean, age, atrial septum, aneurysm, and, and, and so on? Yes. Um, so some key subgroups. So in terms of uh, age and sex, there's no difference. Um, there's no difference by region. About half of the patients came from uh, Europe, Canada, UK. About half came from the US. And no difference between those. And that was potentially a big concern because clinical practice in different regions could vary. Um, patient selection could have varied, but we found essentially the exact same results by global region. And then um, we looked at uh, PFO shunt size and again found no difference in the patients who came in with small shunts or moderate to large shunts. Um, so again, very gratifying to see that the results were the same across the board. Atrial septal aneurysm, we actually only collected that in the patients who went on to closure. Um, so we don't have a comparison um, there, and, and that's something we'll, we're going to try to see if there's a way to uh, address maybe post hoc. Okay, so the results were very consistent. Very, very consistent. The various subgroups. Great. Have you had time to think about any implications of these results for clinical practice? Absolutely. So I, I think, again, these results are, are very compelling and would suggest that um, we, or would show fairly definitively, actually, that we can reduce the risk of stroke in the right population. Um, these devices, well, currently the, the GSO device is approved in, in Europe, and so this could potentially change practice as of today. In the US, the device is uh, still considered investigational for PFO, and so there's a regulatory path uh, to uh, walk down with that. But uh, again, I think it should be fairly straightforward, I would hope, and, and uh, again, I think these results will change practice very soon. Yes. Thank you very much All for right. coming. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you.